Hello, everyone. Welcome to Behind the Mic. I'm Gary Labach, along with Mike Joseph, as we take a look at the Bucknell bison. And I want to clear up immediately because I know there is some misconceptions out there about uh, where you can watch the ball game this week. It will be on RCN television. It will be on WBPH Channel 60. It just will not involve Mike and myself. Mike will be on the sidelines, but it will be an American Sports Network broadcast. And you can watch it, uh, obviously, on the American Sports Network channel. But you can also watch it as you would an LSN ball game on RCN Television and WBPH Channel 60. That clears that up. Now we take a look at the Bucknell Bison. They're struggling, Mike. They have lost three games in a row. They have yet to win a Patriot League ball game, much like us. They have trouble running the ball, much like us. They have a depleted secondary, much like us. Uh, and it's interesting. I think Paul Reinhardt this week in the morning call, uh, and I know at this time of the season, uh, writers are looking for themes. And he came up with a pretty good one when he talked about Groundhog Day where it seems like everything just happens over and over and over again and uh, those things that are happening just haven't been good for the Lafayette this year. Uh, no and uh, it, they, they seem to be struggling in all three phases of the game. Uh, you know they're having trouble obviously last week a little bit on special teams and mm -hmm. weeks in the past in special teams. Um, they got the running game going which I was excited about with Deshaun Brown so maybe that is a uh, 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 move in the right direction I think if they can get that going against Bucknell and I think it's going to be very important who scores first. Um, the other team obviously losing a bunch of games in a row just like us. Um, if you get on top of them early, mm -hmm. you can get some points mm -hmm. on the board, and that's right, I did say points on the board. Um, and I think Lafayette can score this week. I think it's going to go a long way. Well, it has been 10 quarters since the Leopards have put any points on that board. And the one negative, if you're looking at it from our offensive standpoint, is there's no question Bucknell has an outstanding defensive team. Uh, and they always have. They've always mm -hmm. been really stout against the run. They run similar defense to what we run, the 4-2-5. Um, they move around a lot up front. Uh, they take gaps. They penetrate. They do a lot of good things. They have two nice defensive tackles. They always have active linebackers. Uh, and even though their secondary is depleted, they're ball hawks. They do a great job back there. So uh, um, Bucknell is a team that is, uh, is very good uh, in, in all phases. The question is they just haven't put it together like mm -hmm. we haven't put it together. Mm -hmm. But we still have athletes on this football team. Uh, losing Morozik is huge, but that's a chance for other kids to step up and make plays. And, uh, you know, Drew's going to have to spread the football around this week. Uh, Bucknell always gives you a lot of room in the flat areas. Uh, Lafayette's always had big days there, uh, but Lafayette's going to have to establish the run. And I think getting this group together offensive line-wise for another week is going to help get the run going, get the pass game going. Yeah, I guess the, uh, the, the bad news is that Bucknell only gives up about 18 points a ball game. The good news as far as Lafayette is concerned, they only score about 14 points a ball game. So they too have been struggling uh, offensively. And when you look at the two teams' passing game, uh, we have had trouble throwing a deep ball, and it appears as if they also have had problems throwing the deep ball. Yeah, and I'm kind of puzzled as to why uh, uh, Julian Davenport, their left tackle, is I think one of the best in the league, and he's going to be fantastic, may even play on Sundays. Mm -hmm. um, but the question is, if, if you struggle running the football, uh, you're going to struggle throwing the football. But the third down and tens, the third and elevens, the second and tens, those are situations, and I say it every week, you just don't want to be in because it's drop back situations. Mm -hmm. You can't get the ball out of your hand quick enough. You don't have time for receivers to get downfield. So maybe look for Lafayette to lose a little bit more play action, some double moves, things like that, maybe to get some receivers behind people. You know, Lafayette is so due for a complete mm -hmm, football game. Mm -hmm. That, that uh, compatibility Frank talked about, feeding off one another, it's a home game, which I think is huge. Lafayette can settle in for two home games, and then obviously the big one at the end of the season. And don't forget to go inside the huddle with Mike Joseph every single week, as he will uh, certainly make you a smarter football observer. Once again, the ball game is on the American Sports Network, but it is also on RCN Television and WBPH at 3.30, Lafayette Bucknell. Mike and I will uh, be back next week with uh, Behind the Mic, and we'll also be back with the Colgate football game. That's Behind the Mic for this week. I'm Gary Laubach.